Well, I'm thrilled to be here, uh, and it, this, is, uh, this has been an eye-opening thing for me uh, to, uh, to meet all of you and to see your communities. Um, and, uh, you know, this, uh, this is a diamond in a rough right here, so just, just be ready for this. Startup Grind is our company. Uh, we help educate entrepreneurs. We do it in 85 countries. If you've not heard of Startup Grind, raise your hand. Where the heck have you people been for the last five years? Um, we have chapters uh, in 200 cities uh, all across the world. Uh, we have a very clear set of values that connect all of our chapters together, and those are that you give before you take, that you help others before you help yourself, and that you come to make friends. As everyone knows here that does events, there are no awards for how many LinkedIn connections you get at this event. There's no awards given out for the number of business cards that you got. You might feel special for a minute, and then it'll be an empty feeling. Um, it's about how many people did you help, and David and um, Carrie and the whole crew and Evan are great at, at showing that at this event as well. This is our first event in February 2012. It was nothing. Um, it was a couple of friends getting together to help each other, and uh, this is in my office. Um, we were building other products. Um, and, uh, and this just was this fun thing that we did once a month. We did it for about six months, and, um, and then four people showed up at our event, and I got in my car that night, and I said, what the freak am I wasting my time on this for? I've got so many other things to do, and, um, and we hadn't really made a big effort. We hadn't put our whole selves into it, and I said, I'm going to give this one or two more shots. This is true. You hear these stories. This is actually true. Um, if there is an afterlife, which I think there is, someday I hope to like relive this moment um, because it was very important that I didn't give up right at that, at that, at that moment. Um, a few weeks later, we had 45 people in my office. Um, one of the cool things is that we didn't know any of them. Um, we just got out and got people in the room, and I'm still friends with many of them. Um, a few months later, we had hijacked another room in our office complex, and we doubled in size. Um, and then a few months after that, this guy named Jason Calacanis, uh, who's a figurehead in technology, uh, he said, I don't have time to give a talk, but I'll just show up and be interviewed. If you want to interview me, and then I'm going to leave. And uh, I said, all right, cool, man, Jason, whatever you want. And, um, and so he showed up, and I interviewed him, and it worked. And people really liked it. And so we said, well, let's just do that. And so fast forward another six months, um, we are filling rooms full of people in pa downtown Palo Alto with some of the best investors and entrepreneurs uh, telling their stories, telling about how they failed and failed and failed and failed and then eventually hit some success. Um, and then uh, I had this kind of moment uh, where uh, I had this founder one time walk into our event and he walks over to the food and like because we were broke and, and we had the cheapest food possible, it's like, Dominio's pizza stacked, you know, 10 high. And he walks over and he stacks a plate of about eight pieces of pizza. And then he walks out. He didn't even stay for the event. And I was like, I had this epiphany. I said, yeah, I haven't created a community. I've created like a startup homeless shelter. <laughs> it's funny to you. I didn't think it was funny. And so this is the, in my mind, again, this is what this person looks like. I... He's evil. He's like, uh, you know, Wall Street kind of guy. It wasn't. This is not the guy. Um, but I said, you know what? Screw that. Like, I don't want people like that coming because they don't represent my values, right? And so we said, let's start charging for the events. And then that guy's never going to come back because you're not going to buy a ticket for Domino's Pizza. You just go to Domino's and buy your crappy pizza. So we start charging. And what happened was amazing. 60% of the people came back, but they paid. And more importantly, it was the highest quality 60%. And so that's become something for us across the world as a, as a bar of quality to say, hey, just then we don't have to filter people. We know how many people are going to show up. Just pay 5 or 10 bucks or 20 bucks for a ticket. It's not a big deal. It's better than dinner. And you come, and you come early, and you stay late. And that's been something that's been successful uh, for us. At the same time, I had this guy walk up to me after an event, and he said, hey, I love your values. I love your community. I love what you're doing. Can I do this in L.A.? And I was like, that sounds like a horrible idea. And he's like, no, no, we need this. We don't have this. And I'm like, it's L.A. How can you not have something like this? It's not that complicated. But 
I said, all right, let's try it. You know, I said, I hope we don't get sued, and we'll just go for it. And I asked my friends um, to speak at the first event, and, uh, and it worked. I was shocked. Nobody's more surprised about any of this than I am. Um, and then we start doing it in New York, and we start doing it in other cities, and fast forward four years later, and a lot, a lot of hard work, and year and a half, two years in, the, in our garage, working um, lots, of, uh, lots of dinners inside and back to the garage. We've hosted 4,000 events for about 200,000 people in, um, in, in 85 countries. Um, 20 million minutes of our content has been watched. People like Mark Andreessen or Clay Christensen or Eric Schmidt or the founders of Pinterest, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram have all spoken at Startup Grind. Um, I'm going to tell you about a couple of quick stories that I'm proud of from our community. You're all community people, so this is what we share. This guy, Michael Cayley, walked up to me and, uh, after one of these events very early on and said, hey, we need this in Toronto. And I, of course, no, it's not going to work. And um, fast forward four and a half years, this person has hosted 50 Startup Grind events. Um, an amazing, amazing community builder uh, and, and leader in, inside of our community. This is our team in Ramallah, Palestine. How many people have been into the West Bank? Okay, so you drive outside of Jerusalem, you go through the checkpoint into the West Bank, and then you drive through that into Ramallah. And this is a picture I took uh, two years ago, and, and there is this team. You walk into this little room, and it's kind of, it's uh, like a war zone outside at times, and you walk inside, and it's like being in San Francisco. There's, CEO, there's CE, CTOs, there's engineers, there's people getting together, and we're fortunate enough to have them and share values with them, and they do it under our brand. Um, and then a, a, few, a few months ago, or maybe about a year ago, well, I'm like surfing our hashtag on Twitter, and this, I see these pictures from, from Bobble. Who knows where Bobble is, what country Bobble's in? Anyone? Shout it out. No, Iran. It's in Iran. Well, I didn't know where it was either. So I'm like, wow. I turned to the guy next to me, our community manager, and said, dude, Francisco, Bobble is blowing up. Like, look at Bobble. I mean, yeah, there's too many guys in that photo, but other than all the men, it's going really good. We can fix that. Just make a little bit of an effort. You know, be part of the solution, guys. Um, and I'm like, so, like, when did you onboard Bobble? He's like, I, we don't ha I don't even know where Bobble is. What is Bobble? And I'm like, we don't have a chapter in Bobble? He's like, no. So we got in contact with them, and we had a chapter in Bobble after that day. That was really kind of a weird thing, but it was exciting. Um, so I I'm, 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 don't know anything about anything except building communities. Uh, that's the only thing I'm, I'm good at. Uh, and so I'm going to just give you some very high-level things that have made our community grow from one chapter to 200 chapters in a, in a very short amount of time. And we've actually have way more. We could have 350 chapters, but the way that we count chapters are active chapters. And I loved what Gina said earlier about tracking active metrics. That's very important to us as well. And if, if you're not active, we invite you to, to leave because we want people that are engaged. And so we have 200 active chapters. And these are the simple basic things that we have done to grow in that time period. The first thing is to lead by example. I've never asked any director to do anything I would not do myself. And we've tried, I've tried lots of different things. And I would encourage you as, if you are community managers or directors of your company, to con and you do events or you do other pieces of things, I, I specifically do events because that's really the only thing I know about. But I encourage you to go run your own events. See what it's like, use the tools, you, go through the process. Um, and you'll see that you will be less demanding on them and, and you will get more respect from them because they know you're doing it. Um, that's the founder of JetBlue, by the way, and uh, if this goes backwards. And he, you know, all the, you can ride free, free on the plane and everyone, you know, has to help clean up and everything. So even the CEO and founder of JetBlue help vacuums the, the plane. I love that. Um, don't yell at volunteers. This is kind of like, duh, dude. Like, who would yell at their volunteers? Like, these people could have, like, a hundred other things better to do than to help your company build their presence, okay? So, like, be, like, treat these people like gold. 
I mean, these people are the lifeblood. Start Grind is nothing. Start Grind is a meetup with me and my friend if it is not for all of the wonderful chapter directors that make this happen. The thing that we say over and over and over and over again in the office, and we've said this for five years, is today, how do we make directors' lives better? Again and again and again and again, and it's, it's 10,000 decisions uh, to get to this point. And we don't always get it right, and I try to be honest about that when I don't, but I have never yelled at a volunteer except for one guy in New York one time who really deserved it. He was awful. He was terrible. We didn't want him anymore. Um, what's your goal? So I, I'm a founder, and like my goal is to be an entrepreneur in 10 or 20 years from now and to not have my wife hate me, not to go to jail, and not to have my kids uh, hate me too. Um, and that, <laughs> you're laughing, like, dude, you're screwed. If you already think that that's going to happen, you're probably screwed, and you might be right. But Clayton Christensen wrote this book, How to Measure Your Life, and I think it's really, uh, it's really relevant to us community people because... Um, what happens is he went to Harvard, and when he came back to his 10 or 20 or 30-year reunion, many of his coworkers were on their third, fourth marriage. Kids hated them. Jeff Skilling, who if anyone's seen the Enron uh, documentary remembers him, was one of his classmates, was in jail. These were very smart people who never set out to do the, to, to, for this to happen to them, and yet it did. And so as com community work can be so grueling, and it's so all-consuming, and I just would encourage you to step back and make sure and play the long game and don't kill yourself because if you can't survive it, it's not going to survive. So take care of yourself. Take care of your family. You know, I have two beautiful kids, and those, those aren't my kids. Those are my, they're the kids are on the bottom. That's not funny. Joel, if you're here, you did the design. It's not cool, dude. Um... That's what it's about, right? Um, not the two divers from Acapulco. Avoid short-term decisions. Don't, don't eat at McDonald's. Um, but that's, that has nothing to do with this talk. I just wanted to say that. Um, play the long game. Great teams. Empower your teams. Give them tools. Give them great technology. Give them resources. We have three people that manage 200 chapters. We do 130 events a month. Um, we have great tools. And we, have, and we let those people run with it, and we let them come up with new things. Um, so uh, if that's something that you want to learn about, hit me up, and we, we can talk about that. Get great teams. This is our team in Warsaw, Poland. I only know one of these people. She's the chapter director. It's that woman in the blue chair that looks really, really relaxed. You can tell she's in charge. Um, uh, that's Anna. But this is we empower people to, to make things happen on their own without us having to breathe down their neck. Um, help first. It's all about helping people. And, um, and I generally feel like if you, you know, when you're at an event like this or at a, at a normal event on, a, on a, some random week, weekday night, you constantly get people that just pitch your brains out. It drives me nuts. Like, um, and part of this was the genesis of starting Startup Grind. Like, why can't people try to help first before you pitch somebody's brains out? Is that so hard to understand? Like why that's a good thing? It's a good thing because it's thinking of the long game. That's a five, ten year game. And, um, and let me just say one thing in the spirit of helping. My email is Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at startupgrind.com. That's my only email. If I can be helpful to you in any way, just send me an email or come talk to me. That would be better. But, um, but if we don't get to talk, if I can be helpful in some way, please just send me a note, what, whatever it may be. And if you want to know what razors or whatever I use, that's cool too. Um, enjoy the ride. In, in Joe, why the ride, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is not a Trump endorsement, okay? Don't get any ideas, okay? I'm neutral. I'm, okay. Uh, that didn't come off well. <sighs> These are the good old days. We're living in the good old days right now. So try to enjoy what you're doing. David talked about who's going to be here in five or ten years. I am. Are you? I'm gonna, I am going to move at a pace where I will still be here. And hopefully my wife still loves me and my kids still love me. Um, if not, if she says, hey, you can't go to CMX anymore or I will not love you, I will not be here if that's the case. But I'm not, it's unlikely she will say that. Um, pace yourself. Enjoy what you're doing. It's amazing. Thank you for having me to be part of it.